driving forwards into a bay is actually more challenging than reversing out of a bay. And that's because when you get near the space you want, as you enter the bay, the lines go out of view, so it's hard to know where you are. And then when you want to reverse back out of your space, you can't see who's coming. If you're practicing your driving without an instructor, make sure you have insurance. Collingwood and Marmalade specialize in learner insurance, which is great because you can practice in a friend's or family member's car without affecting their policy. Click on the links in the description for a quote. If you click on the link to Collingwood, you'll get up to 20 pounds off your first policy. If you want normal car insurance, click on the link to confuse.com. I find they're great at finding you your cheapest price. Driving forwards into a bay is a bit of an art. I'm gonna walk you through the difficulties and how to overcome them. One problem is you cannot see the lines when you get near the bay. So before the lines go out of view, I use my imagination to extend the lines further ahead or up the wall or fence at the end of the bay so I know where I am. Although this sounds really hard to do, most people actually find it quite easy. Let me show you what I mean. What I do is I extend the lines forward and try and remember where they were. So I could say this little tuft of grass on the left here, maybe this leaf on the right here. You may not be able to see it in the camera, but it's there. Then as I move forwards, I just try to remember where they were. And as the lines go out of view, I know if I'm still in between the lines. This even works when there's a fence or a wall in front of you because you just take the line and extend it up the fence. So I know that this part of the fence, this like spoke, this black spoke part of the fence is over the left line and this right spoke of the fence is over the right line. Remember which spoke is which or where the lines are via the spokes. As you pull forwards, I know the right spoke is the right line and the left spoke there is the left line and I know exactly where I am. I'm now going to use the same method if there was a wall in front of the space instead of a fence. Let's pretend that there's a space in front of me now. I know there's no actual space here, but I'm here, so let's use it. So I'm going to put a pretend space in front of me there. Then I'll draw those lines up the wall and remember that this brick represents the left line and this brick represents the right line. So therefore, if I keep my eye on those two bricks, I can tell if I am in my lines. This is even easier when there is a bay in front of the one you want, as you can use those lines when your lines go out of view. On the driving test, you're not allowed to drive into the second bay, as it's not always an option, so it wouldn't be very fair. You can also use this method to help tell if you're straight. So I know that left spoke over the left line is the left side. So if I'm heading more towards that side than I am the right spoke on the right side, I know I'm pointing left and this time I'm straight because I'm heading exactly between the two spokes. I'm not going one side or the other. I just want to address another issue. The space looks a lot smaller than the width of the car. As you can see, the car is this wide, but the space is only that wide. And that's, that's one of the challenges of driving. So when you're driving, you never want to really think about your car because your car always looks way too big. What you want to do is think about yourself. As you're going forwards, you want to feel like you're walking kind of just a little bit right of your bay, near the middle, but a little bit right of your bay. And where you go is where your car goes. Now, I know what I said doesn't really make sense. Don't worry about the width of your car, but you can't worry about the width of your car because everything looks so small. Perspective means things that are ahead of you look smaller than they are, and you're in your car, which is right here, so you get the full-sized image. When you're driving, you don't really think about the width of your car, you just think about where you're heading as a person, as if you're walking along and you're not in a car. Just make sure you're always slightly right of what you're trying to go through because you sit on the right of the car. Well, at least you do in the UK. In a different country, you may be slightly left as you're on the left of the car. If you're worried about whether or not your space is gonna be wide enough, well, it's a parking space. It should be wide enough for a car. If you're on the road and you're not sure if a space is wide enough, try and take one of the vehicles up ahead, which is also smaller because of perspective, and sort of copy and paste it in the gap in your mind to see if the car up ahead will fit in the space, then you should be able to fit in the space when you get there. Obviously slow down and stop if you're not sure. Another problem with driving forwards into a parking space is it takes between four and five meters to turn a typical car by 90 degrees. 
Therefore, start really far from the space you want. The further you are, the easier it will be. If, however, you start too close, you'll still be at an angle when you've finished driving into the space. You want to be able to turn your car in the smallest space possible. So I recommend you stop before you steer. When you're stopped, turn the wheel all the way. That way, when you get moving again, you're gonna be turning the car in the smallest space possible. It already takes four to five meters to turn the car 90 degrees. You don't want it to take six or seven meters. If you disagree with drive steering and think steering when you're not moving is bad, click on the link up there to my drive steering video so I can give you my thoughts on that topic. Another challenge is judging when to steer the wheel. This varies from car to car, so you need to practice in your own car to get an idea of when to steer. I normally find though that the front of your car is just getting beyond the first line of your space when it's time to steer. From inside the car, that looks like this, but it will probably be different in your car. But it's better to steer late than early. Let me show you why. If you steer too late, it's easy to progress. Simply turn the steering wheel all the way in the opposite direction and reverse. As you reverse, your car will line up with the space. However, if you steer too early, there is nothing you can do. You have to go back to the start. If you try and correct, you will be even earlier than you were before the correction. Judging when to stop is also challenging as you can't see how far forward you are. What I like to do is lower one of my wing mirrors like so. And now as I pull forwards, I'll be able to see the line at the back of the space at the bottom of the car around about here. Then I know I'm in. Be careful when you do this, however, because if you're looking backwards, you're not looking forwards and you may go into something in front of you. So try and look forwards and backwards as you do this. Another method is when the end of your space appears under your wing mirror like so, you should be in. But this also has its problems because you can only see the end of the space next to you, not your own space. So if you're in the last space and there's no spaces next to you, well, you, you won't have a reference. Also, exactly where the end of your space appears under the wing mirror will vary drastically depending on the dimensions of your car. Another way is to look out of the side windows to see how far forward you are in comparison with other vehicles and other spaces. This is one of my favorites because there's always spaces next to you on at least one side. If there wasn't any spaces either side of you, you wouldn't actually be in a car park, you'd just be in a single space. Generally speaking, you wanna feel like you're sitting halfway forwards in the bay, around about here. Time for a demonstration. I'm gonna park in a space on the left, so I'm going all the way over to the right, as far away as I possibly can. I'm gonna stop, so the front of my car's just starting to get alongside the bay I want, which is around about here. Then I'll steer all the way to the left. Just gonna check around and make sure no one's coming around. No one's coming, now I'm gonna move forwards. And now I'm gonna pick up my lines either side and extend them into the grass, try and remember where they are. And as the car gets straight, I'm gonna slowly straighten up so that my wheels are straight by the time my car is straight. And then I'll look at my wing mirror just to see if the back is in the space, which it is now, and I'm done. The next step after driving forwards into the space is to reverse out of the space. This is actually fairly straightforward, but be warned, your visibility behind you will be very poor, so go slow. You also need to be aware that the front of your car will move one way or the other, depending on which way you're steering. So you can't steer fully, or you may hit one of the cars either side of you, if there are cars either side of you. So add your steering slowly and watch the front of the car to make sure you don't hit any cars either side of you and the rear of the car to make sure you don't hit anyone already using the road or any cars in parking spaces behind you. On all of your manoeuvres, it's important that you notice people before they get to you and that you give way to them if you're getting in their way. So stay really slow and leave your manoeuvres to the end of your training because at the end of your training, when you're better at driving, it's easier to keep the car slow and therefore easier to juggle looking round and maintaining a good degree of accuracy. My video up there on parallel parking goes into more detail as to why I leave manoeuvres to the end of the training. 
Well, that's all for this one. Like if you like it, subscribe to get my future videos, and I'll see you on the next one. And that's a wrap. Food time.